So we're back on this long road, which I thought was a good idea to have. It seemed like a good... I wanted to have the different environments feel like they were a good distance away from each other. So I put this very plain and ugly looking road, which is very long, <laughs> separating the crossroads from the fort. Of course, my own stupid idea doesn't make any sense. I could just have a short section or maybe even just have the two connect to each other, the crossroads and the fort, by just like one loading screen and you would still get the idea across that maybe they're far away from each other. Because it just feels like it's a 35 second walk to get to the end, but actually doing it in the game, it really just drags. That's, that shouldn't be a question. Should be a period, not a question mark. Necessary comma.
how do you know about that? God damn it. So we've switched to um, Ambrose and Kismet. And we had a pretty close encounter. I had said in the previous episode that the two um, groups are in the same area, but they've remained separate from each other. They encounter some of the same characters, but they just miss each other. And this is probably the biggest example of that. Um, the t- these two walked up just as, just as the other group had left. And it's like it was a pretty close call. And, in fact, it's something Kismet is trying to maintain because in the story that she knows, the character of Ambrose and the character of Ansel, two A names, I know, they're a little too similar, don't run into each other yet. And she's trying to maintain the integrity of that story. So that's why she's sort of ushering Ambrose to the fort instead of trying to find Ansel out here. So we've also seen a little something there with uh, the music cue didn't fire off. Um, we also saw something there. Romy has rejoined the party, and that party is actually growing quite significant in size. Whereas this party's only the two of them, plus Amy, who's not a combatant. The other party has quite a number of people in it. She is conflicted of, about what she wants to do. She asked Ansel to kill her father, the colonel, because she knew he had lost his mind and she knew he was going to do terrible things and she knew that she couldn't bring herself to kill him herself. So it was it must have been a tremendously difficult thing for her to even ask somebody to stop him, but she had to do something. But now that it's all over with, now that the colonel is dead, she is sort of at a crossroads herself which direction she will go because on one hand she knew what had to happen and she knew that oh my god their their models are still here (laughs) they shouldn't have been she knew that he had to die that the colonel had to die but now that he's dead she mourns his loss and she looks at Ansel as being the guy who, who killed her and she's like oh She's angry when she sees him, and she's thinking about getting revenge against him. So she asks to go with him, travel to the city. On one hand, she she is still conflicted in what to do, and she may still decide to kill him. Well, we'll have to see how that works out. So here we go. And he said, and he said. <laughs> Kids rambling.
All right, so I have a lot of people following now. <laughs> Not going to get in any fights in this area. So Bridget is determined to get to the city, but she's having a hard time finding people that are willing to take her there. She was going to go with Ansel before, but she was kind of embarrassed by the situation and then wouldn't go, and thinking that maybe she'd be able to go with Kismet and Ambrose. As it turns out, Kismet is none too fond of her because she didn't do anything to protect Amy, so now she's forced to talk her way into going with Ansel again. There is a pretty significant difference between like a character like Bridget and a character like Kismet. So we had that situation where, uh, where, she, where Bridget is saying like, what did you expect me to do? I just would have been killed had I tried to defend her because I don't know how to fight. I can't fight off all of these soldiers. What am I supposed to do? Just die? And Kismet's like, yes, you should have just died. And it's a different mentality because from Kismet's position, it's better to sort of die with your honor intact than it is to live as a coward. Like if, like whether you could have done anything or not to save Amy in that moment, you should have tried. And if it meant your death, then so be it. It's better than to live as a coward. It's better than to live having done nothing. Now, of course, Bridget's going to take a more pragmatic look at that and say, like, oh, no, that doesn't make any sense. It, it would have accomplished nothing. So that got her sort of, like, she's not going to be able to follow that group around. Now, something I was legitimately afraid of um, when it came to this character here was I thought, and I think it might still end up being true, that people just hate the character of Bridget because she is kind of useless in a way, and, and especially considering that I never managed to finish the game, so I never managed to implement her sort of shopkeeper aspect as somebody who does have a way of, of contributing to the party. In this incomplete version, she's just kind of a coward that follows you around. Now, she does have a greater significance in the story than we're seeing so far, and she has a history with Ansel, and she does have a greater significance in the overall plot, but that's definitely not coming across yet. So I figured what was going to end up happening was people would see her in the earlier portions of the game and just make up their mind that they hated her as being some... not even knowing what the hell the character exists for. Because you look at all of these other characters, and each one of them, they're fighters, they have their own hang-ups and their own storylines, but they are there to contribute, they are there to fight. Then you have this one character on the side who is kind of coming across as cowardly and useless, and it's like, what the hell is she there for? And I wasn't sure if I could make her come across as a character people would like. And that was one of the motivating reasons for why I sort of fell off on developing this. Because just extracting her from the story was going to be difficult because she does have a greater significance later on. Mostly uh, a significance with the character of Ansel and his, the trauma and stuff that he's going to go through. So simply removing her from the story would be a pretty difficult because I'd have to rewrite significant portions of the later parts. But I was also thinking like what I've done so far, I'm not confident that I'm a good enough of a writer to make her not be a disliked person. And if a person has the early impression of her that she is a un an unlikable person, you're basically never going to turn that around. Somebody's going to hold that first impression for the rest of the game. So. I was sort of stuck. And not to say that Bridget was the entire reason why I stopped working on this. Simple fact was I kind of burnt out. I spent an enormous amount of time working on this game and I was nowhere near completion. And I looked at how much more work I had to do in order to finish it. And I'm like, oh my god, this is going to take forever. I'm never going to release it. Or if I do, it's not going to be very good. It's not going to be something that I could sell. It's going to, at best, be something that I could 
drop and you know, put in a Dropbox or something and let people download and maybe make a few videos about it like what I'm doing right now. So I kind of got discouraged and stopped developing it. But anyway, our characters have finally moved on. They've been stuck in this sort of area around Fort for quite a while, and we're finally moving on. We're still in the first of three acts in this um, in this game, so we're <laughs> we're not quite a third of the way through the game yet. It was going to be a long one. It was way too ambitious for me to be working on this solo. Even using like graphical assets that I licensed from other sources, it was still still way too much work for me. I don't know what the hell I was thinking trying to take on a job of this size. I'd actually thought something I could end up doing instead was sort of writing this as a story, because I did have some aspirations of being a writer at some point also, but I'm, I'm not good at it. And I get easily discouraged, obviously. <laughs> so, oh my god, 21 minutes this video is. Alright, uh, let's, let's uh, hit this barrier and end the game. Thanks, or end the episode. Thanks for watching.